Hey guys, how's it going? It's Strix here, and now that 2018 is officially over, I want to count down the top 10 games I played in 2018. Before we get started, I just want to reiterate that this list is about the top 10 games I played in 2018, and not the top 10 games of 2018. Heck, some of the games on this list didn't even come out in 2018. The reason why I decided to make this video is because I thought it'd be fun to reminisce and talk about some of the games I played throughout the year, and get my thoughts on them. Another reason is because some of the games that I play aren't really that well known, and I want to shine some light on them, and give them some recognition, and hopefully some of them will pique your interest, and make you guys want to pick up some of these games. I loved every game on this list, although some of them did cause me to rage at some point because of some of the features I didn't like, or because I had trouble beating a boss because I'm trash. But regardless, I still love them anyway, and I think you guys should give some of these games a chance if you're interested in them. Originally, I was thinking about rating some of these games from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, but I decided not to, because I will be biased and I will give every game on this list a 10 out of 10. So instead, I'm just gonna list some pros and cons about each game. Also, this entire list is based on my own opinion, and everything I say in this video is my own opinion as well, so I hope you guys can respect that. I also literally only play 10 games this year, so yeah. Some of these games on this list are kind of filler, but not really, because I still enjoyed playing them. But anyways, enough rambling, let's get right into the video. Number 10, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I loved playing Mario Kart as a kid, and Mario Kart 8 was no different. The last time I think I played a Mario Kart game was Mario Kart Wii, when I came out like 10 years ago, and I had a blast playing that, and I had a blast playing Mario Kart 8 this year as well. A lot has changed since the last played. For example, there are a lot more characters, cars, stages, and the graphics look a lot better too. I haven't really played this game that much because I just picked it up a few weeks ago, but from what I played so far, it was great. Some of the pros of this game is that there are a lot of characters, cars, and stages that you can choose from, and there are a lot more Grand Prix Cup than the Wii version. The only con I can really think of is that there isn't really much to do after you beat the Grand Prix Cup, other than playing online or playing with friends. Mario Kart is a game where you have the most fun when playing with friends, and this game definitely be one of the first games I play the next time my friends come over. Number 9, NBA 2K18. You guys are probably wondering, why the heck is NBA 2K18 on here? But well, first of all, I might be a nerd, but I love my sports too. Basketball is one of my favorite sports that I like to play, and to be able to make my own character and play in the NBA is so awesome. I have played every NBA 2K game since NBA 2K12, and I plan on picking up NBA 2K19 when it's on sale. In fact, I think I play NBA 2K18 the most out of every game on this list, and the reason why is because when watching an NBA playoffs this year, I get really hyped and I want to play some basketball. However, since most of the games that I watch happen to be in the evening, I can't go out and play basketball, so the next best thing is NBA 2K18. My favorite mode in NBA 2K is my career, and when I'm not playing my career, I like playing teams from past eras and trying to beat some of the teams from this era. I also love recreating certain what-if scenarios, and I also love shooting half-court threes with Steph Curry, but then again who doesn't? The con is that in the story of my career NBA 2K18 is trash. If you guys are into sports games and especially basketball, NBA 2K is definitely a game you should pick up. Number 8, Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm not really a big fan of fighting games, but Dragon Ball Fighters was an exception. I love Dragon Ball, and the fighting mechanics in this game is beginner friendly, and a lot of fun. The story in this game is pretty interesting, and I had a blast doing a let's play on this game. I haven't played too much of Dragon Ball Fighters since finishing the let's play, but whenever I do play, I have a lot of fun. When playing fighters, I always want to learn new combos, and try to get better, and whenever you discover a new combo, you want to try it out against the computer, or online, and see if you can pull it off. And when you do, it's a beautiful feeling. There's also a decent sized roster, and there are a lot more characters being released from DLCs. Each character is unique in its own way, and the fighting style of each character is true to the show. You can tell that Arc System Works really put a lot of effort into making this game, and I'm really glad that this game is so successful because they really do deserve it. The only con I can really think of is that I wish the roster was bigger, but most fighting games roster are about the same size, and each character is so unique, I can overlook this one. Dragon Ball Fighter is one of my favorite fighting games to this day, and if you guys are into fighting games and Dragon Ball, then this game is definitely for you. Number 7, 
Number 7, Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. I have never really been a fan of the past Sword Art Online games, because I just didn't really like the gameplay aspect of it. But Fatal Bullet is a lot of fun. The gameplay is down as good as games like Call of Duty, but it's pretty good for an anime game. I haven't beaten this game yet, but from what i played so far, it's a lot of fun. This is the first time you can make your own custom created character in a Sword Art Online game, so I really like that. The new characters that were introduced are great, and the interactions between the characters from the show are good too. I also like the art and animation made for this game too. The game is still being supported by Bandai to this day, and I believe that they released a DLC like a month or two ago, which is crazy considering most anime games that I play stop getting support and updates after a few months. Out of all the games on this list, this game has caused me to rage the most. The first reason because I'm trash at shooting games, I used to be pretty good, but I stopped playing first person shooter games a while back, and I was really rusty playing this game. Another reason is that if you fight a boss in this game and you go too far to the map, the boss will despawn, and if you respawn the boss again, it would have full health. So essentially, you wasted your time and bullets fighting the boss, and this happened to me so many times. I remember this one boss where whenever I died, my body would fall off the map, and that would cause the boss to despawn and come back with full health, and combined that with playing this game at 3 in the morning, it was not fun. But other than that, the game was great. The con is that the movement felt really stiff, and although the sword looks cool, the attacking was horrible. Also, the boss respawning with full health was annoying as well. Although the gameplay aspect wasn't really the best, I like what they did in this game such as the custom created character. So I really hope they make a game similar to this, but for the Sword Art Online universe, and not Gun Game Online. Number 6, Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Super Smash Bros is one of my favorite childhood games and I always loved playing it. The last time I played Super Smash Bros game was Brawl, and I remember playing that almost every day after school. Super Smash Bros Ultimate just came out a few weeks ago, and I've been playing that whenever I get the chance. Similar to Dragon Ball Fighters, Super Smash Bros Ultimate is a game where I want to get better at. I'm not that good right now, but I'm trying my best to learn and improve. If you guys are wondering, I main Sonic. The reason why is because back when I used to play Brawl, I main Sonic as well. I really like Sonic's final smash in Brawl, because it looks like he became a Super Saiyan, and I was a huge Dragon Ball fan, and I still am to this day, which is why I mained him. I also like playing fast characters, and Sonic's one of the fastest in this game. I also have a few secondary mains, such as Lucina, Zero Suit Samus, Paul Lutina, and Krom. I haven't played too much of the World of Light yet, but from what i played so far, it's not too bad. I like the Space Emissary in Brawl, and compared to the World of Light, it feels sort of lackluster. But then again, like I said before, I haven't really gotten too far, so I can't really compare the two until I finish the World of Light. I also love how they brought back all the characters from the previous Smash games, and that they plan on adding more in DLCs. I never played the Wii U version, so I'm glad they included all the characters from the past games, so I can try them out. I also like how you can lock all the characters fairly easily, without doing the World of Light. In terms of cons, I can't really think of anything. If you guys want to play a fighting game with all your favorite Nintendo characters, then this game is a game you have to pick up. Number 5, Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Fates was the second Fire Emblem game I played, and I really enjoyed it a lot. The story in this game is pretty good. Basically, to sum up the story, there are two nations that are at war, Hoshido and Noor, and you're stuck in the middle of it because of the bonds you share between the two nations, and you have to choose which side you want to join. I don't want to spoil the story, so that's all I'm going to say. In this game, there are three routes, and each route's story is a little different. The first route is Birthright, which is when you join the side of Hoshido. The second route is Conquest, which is when you join the side of Noor. The third route is Revelation, which is when you don't choose either side. Personally, my favorite route is Revelation because if I were in that situation, that would be the option I would pick. In my opinion, there were some things I didn't like, such as some unnecessary deaths that didn't add anything to the story other than shock value. Another thing I didn't like was the fact that they removed decision making in this game. The only time you can make your own decision is when you choose a route, whereas in Fire Emblem Awakening, there was more decision making. 
I personally love it when games, especially RPGs, allow you to make your own decisions, because it makes the game more immersive, and it feels like you're actually in the game, especially when the option you pick affects the story. Decision making also gives the game more replay value, because you have a reason to replay the game, to experience each option choice. However, there are plenty of things I did like. Some of the things that I liked were the fact that there was more customization for the main protagonist compared to Awakening. The graphics in this game is a little better than Awakening, but not by much. I also like how they added more cutscene animations compared to Awakening. In this game, there's also a mode where you can interact with characters in your room, and when you marry a character, there are special cutscenes as well, which I thought was cool. Although, I didn't like how the mode was censored in the North American version, but back then, Nintendo was more censorship heavy, whereas nowadays, they're more lenient, which is good. They also added a hub world where in between chapters, you can build buildings and place them anywhere, kind of like Clash of Clans, so that was pretty neat. Overall, the game is great. If you like tactical RPGs with waifu that you can marry, then this game definitely for you. Also, Azura's best waifu. Number 4, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Now I know what you're saying, well Trakes, you do a lot of Kingdom Hearts content and you never played Dream Drop Distance until now? And yeah that's true, well sort of. I've been a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts ever since I was little, but I was never able to play any of the games because I didn't own any of the consoles needed to play them. It wasn't until my senior year of high school in 2015 when I started my journey to play all the Kingdom Hearts games. It took me a while to beat all the Kingdom Hearts games because I tried to 100% all the games and with work in college, I didn't have time to play Dream Drop Distance. I started Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance in 2017, but I put it off until 2018 because I was expecting Kingdom Hearts 3 to come out in 2018. I played the 3DS version instead of the PS4 version because I like to play the original game first before playing the remastered version, and also because I was already one third of the way done with the game when the remastered version came out and I didn't want to restart. Anyways, I loved Dream Drop Distance a lot. The gameplay was the most fun I had when playing a Kingdom Hearts game. I felt like I was Spider-Man when I flow motion and bounced between building to building. The story is great too, until they added time travel. Now don't get me wrong, I actually like how they added time travel in the story, because I think time travel is cool, but I didn't like how much more complicated the story got. To sum up the story, basically Sora and Riku were called by Yen Sid to complete the Mark of Mastery, so they could become real Keyblade Masters. Their test was to enter the Sleeping Worlds, and to unlock the 7 Sleeping Keyholes. I really like the Dream Eaters in this game, they all look really cute and awesome, and I like how they added a mode where you can feed them, pet them, and play with them. The dive mode was really fun as well. They also added some new worlds and characters in this game, and I enjoyed all of them. Some of the things I didn't like in Dream Drop Distance was the complicated story, and especially the drop cage. It wasn't that bad, but when you drop in the middle of a boss fight, you can't help but rage. Although, that could be prevented later on with Drop Me Not. Crafting the Dream Eater is also a pain, because the good ones require a lot of rare materials. But out of all the Kingdom Hearts games, this one's definitely one of my favorites, and I can't wait to play Kingdom Hearts 3 in a few weeks. Number 3, Fire Emblem Awakening. Fire Emblem Awakening was the first Fire Emblem game I've ever played, if you exclude Fire Emblem Heroes that is. Awakening was fantastic. I personally wasn't too big of a fan of tactical RPGs at first, but I really enjoyed Awakening. The story was great and the characters were well written. To sum up the story, you're a tactician that was found in the middle of the field without any memories. The leader of the Shepherds, Krom, decided to take you in. The Shepherds are the army for the Hallowed of Ulysses, which is ruled by Krom's sister, Emerin. You fight with the Shepherds to take down the Risen, which are basically zombie ghost things. 
then the story gets so much better from there. But you're gonna have to play the game to find out more. I really like how in this game, there are decision making for important moments that affect the story. It helps with the immersion and that it was part of the story, and actually felt like what I picked counted. Also, the cutscene animation for this game is awesome. There was a lot of DLC too, so after you beat the game, there's more things to do, which is great. What was really cool was they brought back an old character from the previous Fire Emblem games in the story, and you were also able to unlock some of the old characters from the previous game by beating certain DLC. There were also two endings to the game as well, depending on what decision you make at the end. Some of the things I didn't like in Awakening was the lack of customization for the main protagonist. Another thing I didn't like was how expensive the DLCs were, but that's more of a complaint towards Nintendo and Intelligent System's price decision, and not really the game itself. Compared to Fates, Awakening was by far my favorite because of the story. You can tell Intelligent System really put a lot of effort into making this game, and it really showed when I played it. Similar to Fire Emblem Fates, if you like tactical RPGs and a good story, then definitely pick up this game. Also Lucina's best waifu. この世の中にはヒーローが活躍する物語が溢れている。彼らは様々な事件に遭遇し、強大な敵に立ち向かっていく。仲間たちと力を合わせ、世界を火から作り出す。だけど、その物語には脇役が存在する。あるいは登場す
And the number one thing I did not like about this game is the amount of cases you have to do. Cases are essentially like side quests, and you have to do a lot of them in order to lock the next part of the story. I didn't mind doing the cases because each case was pretty interesting, but it definitely gets tedious especially when you just want to get to the main story. With all that being said, the pros by far outweighs the con, which is why it's so high up on my list. If you guys like Digimon and Persona, you should definitely give this game a shot. Number 1. East 8, Lacrimosa of Donna. Man oh man, where do I begin? This game was my favorite game I played in 2018. This game has everything I love in an RPG. It has an amazing story, characters, awesome and fluid gameplay, exploration and adventuring, mystery, and so much more I can't even think of right now. This is the 8th installment of the series, but similar to Final Fantasy, each game has a different story, so you don't have to play any of the previous games to play this game. If anything, there are small references to the previous games with some returning characters, but that's about it. This game is an action slash adventure RPG, where you can explore for hours on a mysterious island, and the map in this game is huge. The gameplay is a hack and slash game, and the attack and combos are very fluid, and you can link your attack and skills easily. The dodging is also fluid as well, and I like how you can cancel out a combo with a dodge. You can also block as well, but I rarely use that. If I were to compare the combat, I would say it's very similar to Kingdom Hearts, except that there's no magic. To explain the story, you play as the main protagonist by the name of Adol, and he's the adventurer who travels across the world to explore different places. You're on a boat with your friend Dogi, and then all of a sudden, a Kraken attacks your boat and destroys it, and you wash up on a mysterious island. After that, your goal is to try to find the other people that were on the ship and to build a new ship to leave the island, or at least that's what you thought. Similar to most survival movies, you and the other people on the island decide to build a fort to protect yourself from the monsters in the wild, and to hunt and grow your own food. While on the island, you experience these weird dreams about a girl you never met before. And this is when the story gets really interesting. So essentially, while trying to escape the island, you're trying to figure out who this mysterious girl is, and why you're having these weird dreams. The girl you're trying to find is called Donna, which isn't really a spoiler because her name is the title of the game, and she reminds me a lot of Lucina and Azura. Like if Lucina and Azura had a baby, it would be her. In fact, the reason why I picked up this game was because I just finished playing Awakening at the time, and I saw Nintendo release a trailer of this game for the Switch, and I saw how Donna looks so similar to Lucina and decided to pick it up. Eventually, after exploring the island a little bit, you find traces of a lost civilization that used to inhabit the island. 
I can go on and on for hours about this game's story, and I really want to talk more about it, but I really don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm going to stop right there. Similar to Digimon Stories, Hypersleuth, Hacker's Memory, there's a lot of decision making. Every question you're asked, you can pick an answer option. Although I don't think that any of it really affects the story other than the dialogue, the reason why I love dialogue options so much is because it allows you to make your own decision on how you want to answer the question if you were in that situation, instead of having the character answer directly for you. This gives you more freedom when playing the game, and sometimes the game has wacky and funny answers that you can choose from, and it's cool to see how the character will react when you pick said option. As I also said previously, this allows you to become more immersed in the story, and make you feel like you're a part of it, instead of watching and playing someone else's story. I personally played this game in English dub, and I really enjoyed it. At first, I wanted to see how the English dub would sound like, and if I didn't like it, I would switch to the Japanese dub. But the English dub really blew my mind, because of how good it was, and I never once switched to the Japanese dub. All the voices fit each character, and the voice actors did an amazing job. It's because of this game that I started playing other games in English dub. Though that being said, I also love Japanese dubs, and I don't mind playing with that on either. This game's also good for those looking for a challenge. There are harder difficulties to choose from, and they're actually really difficult. It's very similar to Dark Souls and how difficult it can be. The music in this game is also fantastic. I loved a lot of music in this game, and I still listen to some of them in the car when I'm driving. Some of the later monsters in this game are based on dinosaurs, and I'm a huge dinosaur lover so that made the game so much better. There are also a lot of modes in this game as well. There's fishing, there's also a mode where you defend your fort from waves of monsters, and there's also a boss time trial, where you try to beat the boss as fast as you can. There's also animated cutscenes in this game that look really good, and they could probably make an anime with those cutscenes. There's also a lot of customization in terms of clothes and different weapons you can craft. There's also some equipment that can grant you certain abilities, like walking on water, which is awesome. Similar to the popularity event to Digimon Story Cybersleuth Hacker's Memory, there are also special cutscenes you can unlock for each character when giving them a gift, but there is no romance option. There are also two different endings. Well, kind of. There's a regular ending, and then there's a true ending, which is basically an extended ending with more cutscenes and an extra final boss. The only thing I did not like about this game is that there's no story DLC. The only DLC they have for costumes, but most of them weren't even available for the PS4. They're only available on the PS Vita and Nintendo Switch, I believe. I wish this game had some story DLC after you beat the game, so that there could be more to do, because I love this game a lot, and I wanted to continue to play this game. This game is amazing, and when I first picked up this game, I did not expect to like it as much as I did. I wish that more people knew about this series, and this game was the biggest reason to why I decided to make this video. Nissa, who is the publisher of the localized version of this game, and Falcom, who is the developer of the game, didn't really do that good of a job of advertising this game. If it weren't for Nintendo releasing a trailer on this game for the Switch, I would have never known about this game. If you guys like adventure slash action RPGs with hack and slash gameplay, and a good story with a lot of mystery and waifus, then definitely give this game a shot. I had a blast playing this game, and I think you guys will too. And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys want to see more top 10 videos or discussion videos, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. This video took a lot of effort to make, so it would be greatly appreciated if you guys would hit that like button as well, if you guys liked the video. Let me know what you guys thought about the games that are on this list, and if you guys decided to pick up any of these games. Also let me know what were some of the games that you played in 2018, and what games would you recommend me to play. I'm always looking for new games to play, so it'd be awesome to add some more games onto that list, even though I won't have enough time to play any of them. The games that are on my list currently for this year is Kingdom Hearts 3, Code Vein, Attack on Titan 2, Nier Automata, Persona 5, Breath of the Wild, and Final Fantasy 13. I doubt I'll be able to play all of them, but hopefully I can play most of them. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later.